Welcome to IAS project. This is the fourth video regarding Harappan culture. If you want to watch the first video, click on this link here. In our last video, we have talked about script, seals and ceilings and also weights and measures. Now let's talk about pottery and terracotta artifacts that were used in Harappan civilization. Before we go into the lecture, let me ask you a question. Consider the below statements regarding miniature pottery of Indus civilization. Three statements have been given here and the question is which of the above statements are correct. The first statement is these were mostly about one inch in size. The second statement is they were often painted in black motifs. The third statement is they were handmade but not wheel thrown. If you know the answer to this question, please answer it in the comment section. First let us talk about how the pottery has changed in the three phases of Harappan culture. That is, how was the pottery during pre-Harappan culture and how was it during Harappan culture or I can say mature Harappan culture and then how was the pottery during late Harappan phase. If we talk about the pre-Harappan phase pottery, then pottery was not standardized in different cultures. We know that pre-Harappan culture is not a single culture, but it is a group of different cultures which eventually became a single mature Harappan culture. We have talked about this in our previous lecture. Some of the centers of pre-Harappan cultures we have seen. For example, we have Dam Sadat culture over here, Kotridiji culture, Nal and Amri cultures, Hakravir sites as well as Soti Siswal culture. So all these are pre-Harappan cultures that were happening in different regions. The contact between them was existing but it was very very less. So for this reason, all these different cultures developed different kinds of pottery. So pre-Harappan cultures can be distinguished mainly by their pottery. We can also distinguish these pre-Harappan cultures by studying their different burial practices. That is, were they burning their dead or burying their dead or were they practicing fractional burial. However, pottery is the most important material element that can be used to distinguish these different pre-Harappan chalcolithic cultures. If we look at the northern villages in the pre-Harappan phase, they were mainly making red pottery. However, the southern villages were mainly making buff pottery or buff ware. Buff is basically brownish yellow color. Therefore, brownish yellow color pottery is simply called as buff ware or buff pottery. For example, you can see buff pottery in this picture here. This is basically brownish yellow color or we can call this as buff color. So this is about the pottery that was being used by pre-Harappan Chalcolithic peoples. We can distinguish pre-Harappan Chalcolithic cultures mainly by the means of what pottery they were using. Northern villages were making red pottery whereas southern villages were making buff pottery. Now let's talk about mature Harappan phase. In mature Harappan phase, pottery has received a high degree of standardization. This means that initially different pre-Harappan Chalcolithic cultures were making different kinds of pottery. In the mature Harappan phase, all of the Harappan cities were more or less making same kind of pottery. What were those pottery? They were mainly plain pottery or painted pottery or painted and glazed pottery. We will learn about what plain pottery and painted pottery are shortly. But let me briefly tell you what glazing is. In pottery terms, glazing is a process by which we make the surface of the pottery shiny. Not only being shiny, because of glazing, pottery also becomes waterproof. For example, if we want to store some water or liquid in the pots, then if we do the glazing, it is very much suitable for storing liquids. Because pottery naturally has pores inside it. And once glazing is done, the pores will become closed. And because of the glazing, pottery also sometimes receives color. So glazing of a pottery mainly gives the pot three things. The first one is it makes the pot shiny. The second thing is it makes the pot waterproof or any liquid proof. Moreover, glazing also sometimes gives the pot color. So mature Harappans mainly made plain pottery and painted pottery. Sometimes they also glaze their pottery. Moreover, mature Harappans also made perforated pottery as well as miniature pottery. We will talk about these two things also in this video. Now that was about mature Harappan phase pottery. If we talk about late Harappan phase, during the late Harappan phase, red and black pottery practically disappeared. This means that people were not making red and black pottery anymore. 
red and black pottery is basically the painted pottery that was being done in mature Harappan phase. So, in the late Harappan phase, people were not making painted pottery anymore. Because of this, overall the pottery became less impressive as well as less bright. So, if they were not making painted pottery, what was their main pottery? Their most important pottery was called as painted greyware. You can see painted greyware over here. Basically, this is a grey pot and on this grey pot, black colored designs or black color motifs are being done here. This is called as painted greyware pottery. So, painted greyware pottery is basically associated with late Harappan Chalcolithic cultures. Since this video is mainly about mature Harappan pottery, we will learn about painted greyware pottery in our next videos. So now, let's talk about the pottery that was being done in mature Harappan phase. Mature Harappan culture mainly had two kinds of pottery. The first kind was plain pottery, which is also called as red pottery or red ware. The second kind is called as painted pottery. It is also called as red and black pottery. First, let's talk about plain pottery. As I have just stated, plain pottery is also called as red ware or red pottery. You can see red pottery or plain pottery in this picture over here. So this is basically red in color. Plain pottery was the most common pottery and the most abundant pottery during the mature Harappan phase. So most of the evidences of pots that we have found from mature Harappan phase are actually plain pottery. Because people were making plain pottery more than painted pottery during the mature Harappan phase. Now let's talk about painted pottery. Painted pottery is also called as red and black pottery. Red and black pottery is the most distinct and the most characteristic pottery of the mature Harappan phase. For example, if there is a question in the prelims exam, which pottery did mature Harappan phase people make, then the answer would be painted pottery. Because plain pottery is a very general pottery. Plain pottery was done even after mature Harappan phase and sometimes even before mature Harappan phase, plain pottery was done. But painted pottery is the most characteristic pottery that is associated with mature Harappan phase people. That is why whenever we talk about pottery in mature Harappan phase, then painted pottery immediately should come to your mind. You can see the picture of painted pottery here. If you look here, painted pottery is mainly red pottery. However, on this red pottery, you can see black designs or black lines and black figures. So that is why painted pottery is basically having a red background on which designs were made in black paint or black color. And what designs did they make? They made pots, jars, vases and other utensils and they painted on these utensils using black color some of the motifs like horizontal lines. You can see horizontal lines over here and over here. They made circles also. You can see some semicircles over here. They also made motifs of plants, trees as well as leaves. We know that people tree was very sacred to them. People tree is also called as Bodhi tree. So this tree was basically very sacred to them. So they made motifs of people tree as well as people leaves also on their painted pottery. Moreover, they also made figures of fish, peacock and other birds and animals also in their painted pottery. So this is about the pottery that was mainly used in mature Harappan phase. Two types of pottery were used. One is plain pottery and the other is red and black pottery which is called as painted pottery. Another unique type of pottery that was made in mature Harappan phase was Harappan miniature pottery. Miniature means small. So you can call this miniature pottery as Harappan small pottery also. Sometimes this miniature Harappan pottery was also painted but other times it was generally plain. So we can see both plain miniature pottery as well as painted miniature pottery. Why are we using the word miniature? Because they were small. Generally, they were about 1 inch in size. Even though they were 1 inch in size, sometimes they were made on the potter's wheel. Sometimes they were made using handmade techniques like pinching. So Harappan miniature pottery was either handmade or wheel thrown. Wheel thrown means it was made on potter's wheel. So what is the use of this miniature pottery if it is really 1 inch in size? The usage was that it was mostly made as toys for children. We exactly do not know why they were made. It is also possible that these were made as decorative items. So we do not know whether there was any practical use to Harappan miniature pottery. 
Moreover, during mature Harappan phase, Harappans also exported their pottery. They were exporting this pottery because they were very good at pottery crafts. They were making very stylized pottery compared to other cultures nearby. However, we must note that Harappans were not very good at artistic works of stone. That is why the kind of pottery we find from Harappa is very very impressive compared to the stone architecture or stone sculptures that we find from Indus civilization. Please remember this from prelims point of view. So in the mature Harappan phase, people really reached a peak for making pottery, which means that the pottery which was made by mature Harappan phase people was really really superior compared to the other cultures nearby. However, even though the mature Harappan phase pottery was so good, some of the cultures that were adjacent to the Indus region did not adopt the Harappan pottery. So these other cultures were still using their own kind of pottery. For example, in Rajasthan, we have Khetri. Near Khetri, there was a Chalcolithic culture called Ganeshwar Jodhpura culture. This Ganeshwar Jodhpura culture people actually supplied copper to Harappan cities. This means that they had contact with Indus Valley civilization people. However, even after this contact, they did not adopt the pottery of Harappan people. They had their own distinct non-Harappan pottery. So this shows that within the Harappan cities, mature Harappan face pottery that is painted pottery as well as plain pottery was very much used. However, outside the Indus region, even in the contemporary Chalcolithic cultures, Harappan pottery was not very much used. These local Chalcolithic culture people were still using their own pottery. Harappans also used pottery for burials. For example, in this picture you can see an excavation of burial. So this is basically a skeleton of a person. And in that burial site, we have also found different kinds of pottery. Along with pottery, sometimes we also found copper instruments and copper weapons. Moreover, we also found beads and other ornaments. We do not know exactly why Harappan people buried all these things with dead people. But however, we know that Harappans buried pottery, copper items, beads and other ornaments also along with their dead people. So what did the Harappans use their pottery for? They mainly used pottery or pots for storing grain. They also used pottery for cooking food because these two things were also done by Chalcolithic people. Moreover, Harappans also used pottery as tableware. Tableware means, for example, plates for eating or bowls or dishes, you know, for keeping cooked food like this. They also used these things also, which were made from pottery. Moreover, one of the distinct kind of pottery that was used in mature Harappan phase was perforated pots. You can see the picture of perforated vessel here. In perforated vessel, many holes were made like this. It is believed that these perforated pots were mainly used for straining or brewing fermented alcoholic beverages. So from this we can understand that Harappans were also consuming alcoholic beverages. Moreover, in recent research, we have found that Harappans also used pots to store milk as well as to make curd. This was mainly done by studying the residues that were found inside the pot found from Harappan cities. So by studying this residue which was inside the pot, they have discovered that this residue belongs to milk and curd. So scientists have established that Harappan people were also consuming milk as well as curd. So we know that Harappan people put some pots along with the dead people in the burials. Moreover, Harappans sometimes put dead people inside the pots also. Such kind of burial is called as a pot burial. Pot burial is simply the burial where you put the dead person inside the pot and then you bury that pot as a whole. This was mainly done for children because children are smaller and the dead body of children would easily fit inside the pot. So this kind of burial is basically called pot burials. We have found pot burials in Lothal, which is in Gujarat. And sometimes, even within these pot burials, not one body, but two two bodies or two two skeletons have been found. However, we should not assume that whenever two bodies are found together, that it is some kind of Sati practice. We know that Sati practice mainly developed during medieval India. For example, Sati practice was very common in medieval India in states like Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh and West Bengal. We will talk about Sati practice more in modern Indian history and especially about Rajaram Mohan Roy. 
So during Harappan civilization, we have found pair of skeletons inside a pot burial. However, we cannot assume that during Harappan civilization, there was a practice like Sati. In Kalibangan also, which is in Rajasthan, we have found an urn burial. Urn is basically a large pot. So don't get confused, urn or pot both mean the same thing. So in Kalibangan, urn burial was practiced. Urn burial is such kind of burial where dead body is basically put inside the large pot. Moreover, Harappans placed both plain pottery as well as painted pottery in the burials. You can see some of the plain pottery in this picture. They were mostly red color but sometimes they were also grey in color. You can see the colored pottery over here. Colored pottery is basically a red background on which black lines or black designs or black motifs are drawn. Now let's talk about Harappan terracotta artifacts. What is terracotta? Terracotta is basically fire baked clay. Let me tell you how terracotta is made. What you do is initially you take wet clay. Wet clay is nothing but clay plus water. So using wet clay you make a shape. For example, I want to make a shape of a bird. Let's assume this is a bird shape which I have made using wet clay. Now after making this bird using wet clay, what we are going to do is we are going to put this wet clay in the fire. After getting heated or after getting baked, this wet clay is going to harden and because of this hardening, it is going to get a rigid shape. So this rigid and hard clay is simply called as terracotta. So terracotta is nothing but fire baked clay. And what did Harappans make using terracotta? They made terracotta toys. They also made terracotta religious figures. They made utility items as well as they made ornaments. If we talk about toys, we have found terracotta pluff from Harappan sites. We have also found buffaloes, birds, dogs, bulls and bullock cart as well as some female figures which were made using terracotta. Most of the times these female figures were having elaborate headdresses. For example, in this picture you can see some fan shaped headdress. Here also you can see some kind of headdress on this female figure. In this picture you can see a terracotta bull. In this picture you can see a terracotta bullock cart as well as two terracotta bulls. So all of these were generally used as toys. Harappans also made religious figures using terracotta. For example, we have found a large number of mother goddess figurines and also bull figurines. Figurine is nothing but a small figure. Okay, It is generally assumed that mother goddess figurine is associated with fertility worship. Fertility worship means people are generally praying for children. So both of these are considered as religious figures in Harappa that were made from terracotta. Since they were worshipping figurines or let's say idols, we can say that Harappan people were idol worshippers. Idol worship means Murti Puja. So they were worshipping these mother goddess figurines. And please observe that we have found large number of mother goddess figurines. This means that mother goddess figurines were mostly in every household. So this also gives us a brief picture on religion of Harappa. We will talk about mother goddess figurines and other religious aspects when we discuss religion in Harappa. Harappans also made utility items using terracotta. For example, they made tableware. Tableware like glasses for drinking water. They also made small plates for eating food. So all these things they also made not only using pottery but also using terracotta. Moreover, they also made spindle walls. Spindle walls are basically used for making thread generally using cotton or wool. So these spindle walls were also made using terracotta. And the last one is terracotta ornaments were also made. For example, we have found large number of terracotta beads from Chanhudaro. Chanhudaro is a Harappan site which is located in Pakistan. We have also found terracotta bangles from Harappan sites. So Harappans made terracotta toys, terracotta religious figures, terracotta utility items and terracotta ornaments. Moreover, Harappans also exported these terracotta figures. So on this basis, we can say that Harappans were mainly exporters of art items. So Harappans were not only exporters of food grains and cotton, but also they were exporters of art items. So what were they importing? Well, that is a question for Harappan economy, which we will be talking about soon.
If you like this video, please subscribe. You can download this presentation from IAS Project Telegram channel. The link for this channel is given in the description section below. Thank you.